Hello, this is Hazardous Waste Management for Generators. We hope you will enjoy this presentation. The two important organizations that regulate the generation and the transporting of the hazardous waste are the Environmental Protection Agency and the Department of Transportation, respectively. The Environmental Protection Agency Resource Conservation and Recovery Act information is found in the Code of Federal Regulations, Title 40, starting with Part 260, and the Department of Transportation Hazardous Materials Regulations are found in Title 49 of the Code of Federal Regulations, starting with Part 100. The training requirements for both agencies are discussed later in this presentation. By reviewing this first chart, you can determine your generator category as defined by the Environmental Protection Agency, a CESQG, an SQG, or an LQG. It is important to remember that both small quantity and large quantity generators must apply for an EPA identification number using EPA Form 8700-12. Here's an example of the Department of Transportation 171.101 table found in Title 49 of the Code of Federal Regulations. You must refer to this table if you are going to ship a hazardous material or hazardous waste over commercial highways, railways, waterways, or by air. I will briefly explain the six steps one should follow when using this 10-column table. However, the training requirements of 49 CFR 172.704 are mandatory for individuals involved in the shipping of hazardous materials and hazardous waste. First step, search the alphabetical listing in column 2 for a proper shipping name of the hazardous materials you intend to ship. Column 3 for hazard class or division, column 4 for identification number, and column 5 for packing group, if appropriate. Second step, check symbols in column 1 and determine if restrictions apply. Third step, determine authorized packaging in columns 8A, 8B, or 8C. Also, for the material selected, look in column 7 to determine if any special provisions apply. Fourth step, determine the required hazard warning label or labels. You may also need to refer to markings found in 49 CFR 172.300 and placarding located in 49 CFR 172.500. Fifth step, determine packaging limits if material is to be transported by air and or rail. Finally, the sixth step is to determine vessel shipment and storage location requirements if material is to be transported by water. All generators who ship a hazardous waste must comply with the EPA and DOT Hazardous Waste Manifest system. The system is designed to seamlessly track hazardous waste from the time it leaves the generator facility where it was produced until it reaches the off-site waste management facility that will store, treat, or dispose of the hazardous waste. Once the waste reaches its destination, the receiving facility returns a signed copy of the manifest to the generator, confirming that the waste has been received by the designated facility. Copies of the hazardous waste manifest form may be obtained on EPA's official website free of charge. The manifest is EPA Form 8700-22, and continuation sheets to the form are 8700-22A. Unlike conditionally exempt small quantity and small quantity generators, regulations governing large quantity generators are more stringent. Large quantity generators generate more than 1,000 kilograms of hazardous waste and or more than one kilogram of acutely hazardous waste in a period of one month and the waste must be shipped off-site for disposal within 90 days. Waste must be accumulated at the point of generation, meaning no satellite storage areas are permitted. Large quantity generators must have a written contingency plan in accordance with Subpart D of EPA Title 40 Code of Federal Regulations. Manifesting and labeling of waste prior to shipping is required for both large and small quantity generators. 
The Resource Conservation and Recovery Act, pronounced RICRA of 1976, as amended, is the nation's basic law governing the management of hazardous waste. The Environmental Protection Agency administers RICRA and other environmental laws under the Code of Federal Regulation, CFR, Title 40. The goals set by RICRA are to promote human health and the environment, to reduce waste and conserve energy and natural resources, and to reduce or eliminate the generation of hazardous waste as expeditiously as possible. The major concepts of the RICRA laws are to establish a national hazardous waste policy, establish liability of generators of the hazardous waste, and finally, proper management of hazardous waste from the so-called cradle to the grave. As a generator of various types of waste, one needs to become familiar with some of the subtitles of the RICRA laws, namely, subtitles D, C, and I. Subtitle D involves the proper management of solid waste. Subtitle C deals with the proper management of hazardous waste. And subtitle I has to do with management and inspection of underground storage tanks. This diagram illustrates the connection or overlap of RICRA with other federal programs. Some examples include the DOT's Hazardous Materials Regulations found in Title 49 CFR and OSHA's Hazardous Waste Operations and Emergency Response Regulations detailed in Title 29 CFR 1910 for general industry and 29 CFR 1926 for construction workers, just to name a few. In other words, individuals working with small or large quantities of hazardous waste should be certified under the DOT and OSHA training programs, as well as EPA's 40 CFR training requirements mentioned later in this presentation. The term solid waste is defined as any garbage, refuse, sludge from a waste treatment plant, water supply treatment plant, or air pollution control facility, and or any other discarded material, including solid, liquid, semi-solid, or contained gaseous material, from industrial, commercial, mining, agriculture, operations, or community activities. A solid waste may or may not be excluded from RICRA regulations. This can be determined by asking a simple yes or no question. For example, is the material being discarded because it was abandoned, inherently a waste-like material, discarded military munition, or is it to be recycled? If the answer to any of these is yes, then the material is considered a solid waste and may be subject to RICRA regulations. If the answer is no, the material is not a solid waste and therefore is not subject to RICRA regulations outlined in Subtitle C. The term hazardous waste is defined as a solid waste, even if it is a liquid, or a combination of solid wastes, which because of its quality, concentration, or physical, chemical, or infectious characteristics may cause or significantly contribute to an increase in mortality or increase in serious irreversible or incapacitating reversible illness or pose a substantial present or potential hazard to human health or the environment when improperly treated, stored, transported, or disposed of, or otherwise managed. This decision chart will help you decide if the material is considered a hazardous waste and therefore subject to RICRA Subtitle C regulations. First, we ask the question, was or is the material considered a solid waste? If it is, then we ask, is the waste excluded from the definition of solid or hazardous waste? If the answer is no, then we must determine if the waste fits the description of a listed or characteristic waste. If the answer is no, then we know the material is not subject to RICRA regulations. However, if the answer is yes, then we...